Do It Today, Learn to Overcome Procrastination. Written by Justice O. Malcolm. Published by Audiobooks Office. Introduction. Why do we put off the things we know we need to do? Why is it so easy to delay the important tasks in life, only to find ourselves overwhelmed later? If you've ever stared at a to-do list, knowing exactly what needs to be done but feeling unable to start, you're not alone. Procrastination is a universal challenge, and it holds more people back than almost anything else. This book is here to change that. Welcome to Do It Today, Learn to Overcome Procrastination. This isn't just another book on productivity. It's a guide to understanding why we procrastinate and, more importantly, how to break free from its grip. The habit of procrastination is more than just a bad time management skill. It's often tied to deeper emotional and psychological factors, like fear of failure, perfectionism, or the desire for instant gratification. These forces silently sabotage your success, leaving you stuck in a cycle of delay and regret. Imagine what your life would look like if you no longer let procrastination control your days. Imagine crossing off tasks effortlessly, making steady progress on your goals, and feeling a deep sense of satisfaction because you're no longer just dreaming you're doing. That's the transformation this book will help you achieve. In Do It Today, you'll uncover the root causes of your procrastination and learn simple, actionable strategies to overcome it. Whether you're struggling to start a long-term project, consistently missing deadlines, or just feeling overwhelmed by your daily tasks, this book will equip you with the tools you need to take control. From creating an environment that encourages focus to developing habits that promote consistency, you'll gain the confidence and skills to tackle anything on your plate. Overcoming procrastination isn't about willpower alone, it's about understanding your behaviors and making small, sustainable changes that add up to big results. This book will guide you through that journey, helping you take action today, not tomorrow. Are you ready to break free from the chains of procrastination and take control of your life? Let's get started, because there's no better time than now. You're stuck in a cycle of postponing tasks and it's hindering your productivity. You've probably asked yourself, why can't I just get this done? It's not as simple as just buckling down and doing it, is it? Procrastination's roots often lie deeper, tangled in fear of failure, perfectionism, or self-control issues. What if I told you there's a practical way to untangle this mess? A believable walkthrough to help you understand your triggers, set achievable goals, and develop a resilient mindset. Don't wait till tomorrow. Let's tackle this today. Why? Because your future success depends on it. For more information about the ebook version of this audio, check the video description or visit audiobooksoffice.com. We notice that 69% of you who listen to our video are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Chapter 1. Understand the Roots of Procrastination Almost everyone, at some point, has fallen victim to procrastination. You know the drill you have something important to do, but you keep putting it off. You tell yourself that you'll do it later, but later never seems to come. You're stuck in a cycle that seems impossible to break. But why does this happen? Why do we procrastinate? First, it's important to understand that procrastination isn't a symptom of laziness. It's a complex psychological behavior that has its roots in our fear of failure, our fear of success, our perfectionism, our struggle with self-control, and our issues with time management. When you're afraid of failure, you might procrastinate as a way to protect yourself from the possibility of not meeting expectations. If you don't try, you can't fail, right? On the other hand, fear of success can also lead to procrastination. You might be worried about what success could bring, such as increased expectations or responsibilities. Perfectionism is another common cause of procrastination. 
You might put off starting a task because you want everything to be perfect and you're worried that it won't be. Similarly, if you struggle with self-control, you might find it hard to resist the immediate rewards of enjoyable activities in favor of the long-term benefits of completing your work. Lastly, poor time management skills can lead to procrastination. If you don't have a clear plan for when and how to tackle your tasks, it's easy to keep pushing them off. Understanding these roots of procrastination is the first step to overcoming it. By identifying these underlying issues, you're already on your way to defeating this productivity killer. Chapter 2 Identify your procrastination triggers. Often you'll find that certain situations or feelings trigger your tendency to procrastinate. You might put off starting a project because it feels overwhelming or delay making a decision because you're afraid of making the wrong choice. Perhaps you tend to procrastinate when you're tired, stressed, or bored. Recognizing these triggers is a pivotal step in overcoming procrastination. Think back to the last few times you procrastinated. What were you feeling? What were you thinking? What were the circumstances? You might find patterns, like always procrastinating on Sunday nights, or when facing tasks that require creativity. You're not alone in this. It's common to procrastinate in certain situations or states of mind, and identifying these triggers is a major step forward. Once you've identified your triggers, don't judge yourself harshly. Instead, look at them as opportunities for growth. It's not about blaming yourself for past procrastination, but about understanding what causes it so you can address those issues directly. For instance, if you often procrastinate when you're tired, consider shifting your task to a time when you're more energetic. If large projects overwhelm you, try breaking them down into smaller, manageable tasks. If you dread certain tasks, explore why and see if there's a way to make them more enjoyable or delegate them. In the end, understanding your procrastination triggers can empower you to manage your time better and work more efficiently. Remember, you're capable of change. The first step is simply recognizing what's holding you back. It's time to take that step today. Chapter 3 Set achievable goals and deadlines. Charting a course towards success, setting achievable goals and deadlines is essential. It's like marking out a clear path in a dense forest, guiding you through the undergrowth of procrastination. So how do you set goals that are both challenging and attainable? First, it's about understanding your capacity and limits. You can't expect to run a marathon without training, right? Similarly, don't set goals that are beyond your current abilities. Start with small, achievable targets that will build your confidence and momentum. Next, make your goals specific. Instead of saying, I want to get better at time management, Try I will spend 30 minutes each day planning my tasks. This gives you a clear, measurable target to aim for. Creating a sense of urgency is also vital. That's where deadlines come in. Deadlines push you to start working now rather than later. But again, be realistic. Setting too tight a deadline will only stress you out, and that's counterproductive. Bear in mind that goals aren't set in stone. They're meant to guide you, not box you in. If a goal is too challenging, don't be afraid to adjust it. Remember, the aim is progress, not perfection. Chapter 4 Break tasks into manageable steps. Plunge into your tasks by breaking them down into manageable steps. It's a tried and true method that you've likely heard before, but have you truly given it a shot? This isn't just about making a to-do list, it's about thoroughly understanding each task, dissecting it into smaller parts, and tackling those parts one at a time. It's about transforming the overwhelming into the achievable. Imagine you're preparing a feast for a big gathering. If you view this as one giant task, 
you'll likely feel overwhelmed and will be tempted to put it off. Instead, break it down. Plan the menu, shop for ingredients, prepare different components on different days. Instead of one mammoth task, you're dealing with multiple smaller, manageable tasks. Each completed task will give you a sense of achievement and motivate you to proceed to the next. This approach not only makes the task seem less intimidating but also allows for better planning and less stress. You'll be less likely to procrastinate when you know exactly what needs to be done and you're confident that you can do it. Remember, it's about progress, not perfection. It's also vital to verify that each step is clear and specific. Instead of writing work on project, write research data for project. This specificity will prevent ambiguity and further procrastination. Breaking tasks into manageable steps is a powerful tool to conquer procrastination. It's a practical, effective strategy that can make your life simpler and more productive. Chapter 5 Prioritize and organize your work. Once your tasks are broken down into manageable steps, it's essential to prioritize and organize your work. This isn't just about creating an orderly to-do list. It's about consciously deciding what deserves your attention first. It's about discerning urgent tasks from pivotal ones and trivial tasks from substantial ones. It's about realizing that not all tasks are created equal, and that's okay. Start by making a list of all your tasks. Then rank them according to their importance and urgency. High priority tasks are those that contribute markedly to your goals and have impending deadlines. Low priority tasks might still be important, but they can wait. Remember, this isn't about how quickly a task can be done but how much it matters. Next, organize your tasks into a structured plan. Consider using a project management tool or a simple notebook. The goal is to have a clear visual representation of what needs to be done, in what order, and by when. Sign deadlines and stick to them. This won't only keep you accountable but also provide you with a sense of progress as you check off each task. Chapter 6. Eliminate Distractions and Temptations Having a well-planned and ordered list of tasks is a solid step towards overcoming procrastination. But let's step it up a notch. You need to eliminate distractions and temptations, those sneaky little time thieves that lure you away from your responsibilities. Think about what typically distracts you. Is it social media? Email notifications? A noisy environment? Identify these distractions, then devise a plan to eliminate them. If you're always checking social media, consider using apps that block these sites during specific hours. If your workspace is noisy, try finding a quieter place or using noise-canceling headphones. Temptations, on the other hand, are a bit trickier to handle. They're the things you'd rather be doing instead of your tasks. Maybe it's the allure of a new Netflix series or the comfort of your bed. Crucial to recognize these temptations and establish boundaries. Set specific times for leisure and stick to them. If your temptation is too strong, consider removing it from your immediate environment, at least during work hours. Remember, distractions and temptations aren't inherently evil. They become problematic when they're used as an escape from responsibilities. By learning to manage them effectively, you'll be well on your way to overcoming procrastination. Don't forget all about balance. Sure, eliminate distractions during work hours, but also allow yourself time to relax and enjoy those things you love. You're not just learning to manage time, you're learning to manage yourself. And that's a skill worth mastering. Chapter 7 Develop a positive mindset. Climbing the mountain of procrastination starts with a positive mindset. It's not just about willpower or discipline. It's about how you perceive your tasks and your ability to complete them. 
Developing a positive mindset is more than just thinking happy thoughts. It's about changing your perspective. Instead of seeing tasks as burdens, see them as opportunities for growth and learning. Instead of focusing on the difficulty of a task, focus on the satisfaction you'll feel once it's completed. Remember, your mindset isn't fixed and can be changed. It takes deliberate effort and practice. Start by catching negative thoughts as they occur. When you find yourself thinking, I can't do this, stop and reframe that thought into, I can learn to do this. When you think this is too hard, change it to, this is a challenge I can overcome. It's also important to set realistic expectations. Don't expect to change your habits overnight. Change takes time. Be patient with yourself and celebrate small victories along the way. Finally, adopt an attitude of resilience. There will be days when you fall back into old habits. Don't let these setbacks discourage you. Instead, see them as opportunities to learn and improve. Remember, overcoming procrastination is a journey, not a destination. With a positive mindset, you'll find that tasks become less intimidating and procrastination less tempting. You're not just changing your habits, you're changing your life. So, start today. Develop a positive mindset and conquer the mountain of procrastination. Chapter 8 Leverage the Power of Accountability While developing a positive mindset sets the foundation for overcoming procrastination, it's equally important to hold yourself accountable for the tasks you need to accomplish. Accountability is the catalyst that turns your intentions into actions. It's the bridge between dreaming and doing, and it's a powerful tool that can help you overcome procrastination. Start by setting clear, measurable goals for yourself. Write them down and break them into manageable steps. This makes it easier to track your progress and keeps you focused on your end goal. But remember, it's not enough to just write your goals down. You need to review them regularly, make your goals visible, put them in a place where you'll see them every day. This constant reminder will keep you motivated and help you stay on track. Next, create a system of accountability. This can be as simple as telling a friend about your goals or as formal as hiring a coach or mentor. Having someone to answer to gives you an extra layer of motivation to follow through on your tasks. It adds a social element to your goals, making them feel more real and more important. It's harder to ignore a task when you know someone else is expecting you to complete it. Chapter 9 Celebrate small wins and progress. In overcoming procrastination, don't overlook the importance of celebrating small wins and making note of progress, no matter how minor. It's easy to dismiss the value of small victories, especially when your goal seems miles away. However, these tiny triumphs are your stepping stones to success. Each small win is a confirmation of your capabilities. When you complete a task, no matter how small, you're proving to yourself that you can do it. You're breaking down that overwhelming task into manageable parts and conquering them one by one. It's a powerful way to boost your self-confidence and motivate yourself to keep going. Moreover, tracking your progress helps you see how far you've come. It's not always about the final destination, but the journey you undertake to get there. When you look back and see how many steps you've already taken, it can give you the push you need to keep moving forward. Let's say you're writing a book and you've managed to write a page after a week of procrastination. Celebrate that. You've started, and that's often the hardest part. Embrace the progress you've made. It may be a small step, but it's a step nonetheless. Chapter 10. Cultivate self-discipline and consistency. Pushing through the barriers of procrastination requires more than just occasional effort. It's about cultivating self-discipline and consistency. This isn't about summoning a burst of willpower whenever you feel like it. 
It's about developing a solid habit, a consistent daily action that moves you closer to your goals. Start by identifying your key tasks. What are the actions that, if done daily, would make a significant impact on your life? Self-discipline begins with clarity. You have to know what you're disciplining yourself to do. Make a list of these tasks and prioritize them. This is your roadmap to overcoming procrastination. Next, commit to consistency. Aim to complete these tasks every day, no matter how small the progress may seem. Consistency is the secret sauce that makes self-discipline stick. It's not about perfection, it's about progress, and progress is made through consistent action. Now, let's talk about motivation. You might think that motivation leads to action. In reality, it's the other way around action fuels motivation. So don't wait for the perfect moment. Begin now, start the task, and you'll find your motivation along the way. Lastly, be patient with yourself. Cultivating self-discipline and consistency is a journey, not an overnight change. It's okay to stumble, to have off days. What's important is that you pick yourself up and keep going. Chapter 11. Overcome Perfectionism and Overthinking Perfectionism, a double-edged sword, can often serve as fuel for procrastination and overthinking. You aim for flawlessness, setting excessively high performance standards. Yet you're frequently bogged down by self-criticism, overthinking every step of the way. This can lead to paralysis by analysis where you're stuck in a loop of endless planning and never executing. It's important to understand that perfection isn't attainable. The reality is, even the most successful people make mistakes. They're just better at learning from them and moving on. You need to shift your mindset from perfectionism to progress. Focus on taking action, however small instead of obsessing over achieving perfection. Overthinking is another procrastination culprit. You ponder on a task so much that it becomes intimidating, leading to avoidance. The key to overcoming overthinking is to set clear, manageable goals and start taking action. Break down your tasks into smaller, manageable parts that you can accomplish one at a time. This prevents the task from seeming overwhelming and reduces the urge to overthink. Remember, progress not perfection should be your mantra. Start acting today. Embrace your mistakes as learning opportunities and stop letting overthinking hold you back. You'll find that as you take action, your fear of imperfection and the habit of overthinking will subside, leading to increased productivity and a significant reduction in procrastination. Utilize productivity techniques and tools. Chapter 12. Utilize productivity techniques and tools. To boost your productivity and combat procrastination, you'll find a wide array of techniques and tools at your disposal. Let's explore some of the most effective ones. The first step is to break down your tasks into manageable chunks. This technique, known as time boxing or the Pomodoro technique, is a proven method to increase productivity. You'll work on a task for a set amount of time, typically 25 minutes, then take a five minute break. This helps maintain focus and prevent burnout. Next, consider employing a task management tool. Apps like Trello or Asana let you visually organize tasks, set deadlines and track progress. These tools provide an overview of your tasks, helping you prioritize and stay on track. A vital aspect of productivity is the elimination of distractions. Tools like Stay Focused or Freedom can block distracting websites during your work hours. It's also beneficial to organize your workspace, minimizing potential distractions in your physical environment. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of a to-do list. It's a simple yet effective tool to keep track of tasks. It gives you a clear overview of what needs to be done, aids in prioritization, 
and delivers a sense of accomplishment as you tick off completed tasks. Chapter 13 Manage Your Energy and Well-Being While mastering productivity techniques is a significant step in overcoming procrastination, it's equally important to manage your energy and overall well-being. When you're physically and emotionally drained, it's harder to focus and easier to slip into procrastination. So, it's time to pay attention to your energy levels and emotional state. First, let's talk about energy. You must understand your body's natural rhythm to optimize your productivity. Some people are morning birds, buzzing with energy as soon as they wake up. Others are night owls, finding their stride after the sun sets. Recognize your peak energy times and plan your toughest tasks for those periods. You'll be surprised at your increased efficiency. Next, address your emotional well-being. Stress, anxiety, or negative self-talk can be powerful triggers for procrastination. Incorporate stress-reducing activities into your day. Maybe it's a quick meditation session, a brisk walk, or a few minutes of deep breathing. Be in tune with your emotional state and respond with compassion. Take regular breaks, too. Studies show that taking short breaks during long tasks helps maintain a constant level of performance. Breaks also help to retain information and make connections. Try the Pomodoro Technique work for 25 minutes, then take a 5-minute break. Chapter 14 Develop a Healthy Routine and Habits Establishing a healthy routine and forming beneficial habits can notably enhance your ability to overcome procrastination. It's not just about scheduling tasks, it's about creating a lifestyle that supports productivity and efficiency. Start by designing a morning routine that gets your day off to a positive start. This could be as simple as making your bed, meditating, or exercising. The goal is to create a sense of accomplishment first thing in the morning setting the tone for the rest of the day. Next, pinpoint the tasks you're prone to procrastinate on. Is there a pattern? Do they require a big commitment, or are they simply dull? Once identified, break them down into smaller, manageable parts. Your brain perceives small tasks as achievable, making you less likely to put them off. It's important to remember that habits take time to develop. It's about repetition and consistency. Make it easy to start these tasks by setting up cues. For instance, if you want to start running, leave your running shoes by the door. Over time, you'll associate the sight of the shoes with running, making it easier to start the task. Finally, don't forget to reward yourself. Positive reinforcement can dramatically boost motivation. This doesn't mean indulging in a large pizza after going for a run. Instead, reward yourself with something that aligns with your goal. Creating a healthy routine and forming good habits isn't a quick fix. It's a journey of small steps towards a larger goal. But remember, it's these small steps that lead to big changes. Start today, and you'll soon see the progress you're capable of. Chapter 15 Embrace failure as a learning opportunity. Don't shy away from failure. Instead, embrace it. You've probably heard this piece of advice countless times, but putting it into practice isn't as easy as it sounds. In fact, it's a tall order, especially when you're dealing with procrastination. You see, procrastination is often tied to a fear of failure. You put things off because you're afraid you won't succeed or because you're worried about the potential consequences of failure. But here's the thing, failure isn't the end. It's merely a stepping stone on your path to success. The key is to shift your mindset. Instead of viewing failure as a terrifying monster to be avoided at all costs, see it as a teacher. It's a teacher. It's a tough one, sure, but it's also one of the best out there. Each time you fail, you learn something new. Each mistake you make is an opportunity for growth. So, the next time you feel that familiar urge to procrastinate, take a moment to ask yourself why. Are you afraid of failing? If the answer is yes, remind yourself that failure isn't something to be feared. 
It's something to be embraced. It's a chance to learn, to grow, to become better. You've got this. So go ahead and take that leap. Embrace failure as a learning opportunity. You might just find that it's the push you need to overcome procrastination once and for all. Chapter 16. Foster a supportive environment and relationships. Building a supportive environment and nurturing healthy relationships can dramatically shift your approach to tackling procrastination. Surrounding yourself with positive influences not only uplifts your mood, but it also instills a sense of accountability. When you're part of a community that respects time and productivity, you'll be more inclined to adhere to these values as well. Creating such an environment starts with you. Be proactive in seeking relationships that motivate and inspire you. It could be a mentor who gives constructive criticism, a friend who's always punctual, or a family member who never misses deadlines. Their habits will gradually rub off on you, and you'll find yourself mimicking their productivity. Now you're wondering, how do I foster these relationships? Well, it's simpler than you think. Start with open communication. Express your struggle with procrastination and your desire to overcome it. Most people are willing to help when they know what you're going through. Also, reciprocate by supporting them in their endeavors. This builds mutual respect and understanding, forming a strong foundation for a productive relationship. However, it's equally important to distance yourself from negative influences. If you're constantly around people who procrastinate, their habits may spill over onto you. It's not about cutting ties, but rather limiting your exposure to their procrastination-inducing habits. Chapter 17 Overcome Procrastination in Work and Studies Procrastination has a knack for creeping into your work and studies, but with the right strategies you can tackle it head-on. Whether you're faced with a challenging work project or a complex study assignment, procrastination is likely your biggest adversary. However, it's vital to remember that overcoming this challenge is entirely within your control. Firstly, establish achievable goals. The enormity of a project might overwhelm you and invite procrastination. Break it down into manageable tasks. Not only does this make the project seem less intimidating, but it also provides a clear roadmap for you to follow, keeping procrastination at bay. Secondly, practice time management. Create a schedule that includes specific time slots for your tasks. This isn't just about structuring your day, it's about making a commitment to yourself. When you allocate time for a task, you're making a promise to tackle it. Thirdly, Keep distractions to a minimum. Whether it's your phone, social media, or a chatty colleague, distractions are procrastination's best friends. Identify what's diverting your attention and take steps to minimize it. Lastly, don't forget to reward yourself. Procrastination often stems from dread. You can combat this by associating task completion with a reward. Whether it's a short break, a treat, or a walk, Rewards can serve as great motivators. Chapter 18 Conquer Procrastination in Personal Projects In the domain of personal projects, tackling procrastination can feel like a formidable task. You've got an idea, a dream, a goal, yet you find yourself constantly delaying the steps needed to bring it to fruition. But don't despair. You can conquer this procrastination mountain, and I'm here to show you how. First, understand the root of your procrastination. Is it fear of failure? Perhaps it's the enormity of the project that intimidates you. By pinpointing the underlying issue, you're already halfway to overcoming it. Next, break your project into manageable tasks. When faced with a massive project, it's easy to feel overwhelmed but by dividing it into smaller tasks, it becomes less intimidating. You'll feel a sense of accomplishment as you tick off each task, fueling your motivation to continue. Now, let's talk about setting a schedule. Procrastination loves ambiguity, 
So, by setting specific times for working on your project, you're taking away its power. Consistency is key here. Even if it's just an hour a day, stick to it. Finally, hold yourself accountable. Share your project with a friend or join a group with similar interests. The pressure of others expecting results can be a powerful motivator. Chapter 19. Tackle procrastination in household chores. When it comes to household chores, you might find yourself stuck in the rut of procrastination. The pile of laundry, the dirty dishes, the unmade bed, they all seem intimidating. But remember, every task begins with a single step. First, analyze why you're procrastinating. Are the tasks too overwhelming? Are you unsure where to start? Identifying the reason can help tailor a solution that works for you. Perhaps you're overwhelmed by the enormity of tasks. In that case, break them down into manageable chunks. Instead of cleaning the entire house, focus on one room. Don't try to do everything in one day. Set realistic goals and stick to them. You'll find that smaller tasks are more manageable and less frightening. If you're unsure where to start, create a schedule. Prioritize tasks based on their urgency. Starting with the most pressing tasks can give you a sense of accomplishment, spurring you to tackle the next chore. Motivation plays a key role in overcoming procrastination. Create a reward system for completing tasks. It could be anything from a short break to a favorite treat. Remember, it's okay to seek help. If chores are too much for you to handle alone, enlist the help of family members or hire professional cleaning services. Lastly, maintain a positive mindset. Instead of viewing chores as burdens, see them as opportunities to create a cleaner, healthier living space. You're not just doing the dishes, you're creating a pleasant environment for yourself and your loved ones. With these strategies, you'll be well on your way to tackling procrastination in household chores. Do it today, not tomorrow. Chapter 20. Manage Procrastination in Digital Spaces Crossing the world of digital distractions can feel like a minefield, especially when you're trying to get work done. Your phone buzzes with social media notifications, emails pile up, and suddenly you're down a YouTube rabbit hole. It's not your fault these platforms are designed to be addictive. The key to managing procrastination in the digital landscape is understanding your triggers and creating a game plan. Analyze your digital habits. What's causing the most distraction? Is it the constant ping of messages or the allure of scrolling through Instagram? Once you've identified the culprits, take steps to limit their influence. Turn off unnecessary notifications. Schedule specific times for social media checks. It's about creating a digital environment that encourages productivity, not procrastination. Use technology to your advantage, too. There's a plethora of apps designed to help manage time and limit distractions. Consider using productivity apps like Forest or Rescue Time. They'll offer insights into where your time is going and help you stay focused. Remember, it's not about completely eliminating digital distractions. That'd be as unrealistic as aiming to live in a world without chocolate. It's about balance. Give yourself permission to enjoy these platforms, but within boundaries you've set. You've got this. It's your space to control. So step up, be firm with yourself, and take charge of your digital world. Overcoming procrastination is a journey, not a destination. Each step you take is a victory in itself. Keep going. You're doing great. Chapter 21. Overcome procrastination during stressful times. Stressful times have a knack for amplifying procrastination. It's a familiar scenario, isn't it? Deadlines are looming. The workload is mounting and yet you find it increasingly hard to get started. It's not just you. High-stress situations often trigger avoidance behaviors, such as procrastination. So how do you conquer this challenge? You need to first understand that stress and procrastination feed off each other in a vicious cycle. Stress leads to procrastination, which in turn increases stress levels. 
Breaking this cycle requires a strategic approach. Start by identifying your stress triggers. Is it a particular task, a looming deadline, or perhaps an overwhelming workload? Once you've pinpointed the stressor, you can begin to address it. If it's a task you're avoiding, break it down into smaller, manageable pieces. If it's a deadline causing anxiety, create a detailed plan outlining the steps required to meet it. If an overwhelming workload is the issue, learn to delegate or prioritize tasks. Next, develop stress management techniques. Regular exercise, deep breathing exercises, and mindfulness meditation are all effective ways to reduce stress levels. When you're less stressed, you're less likely to procrastinate. Lastly, remember to be kind to yourself. It's okay to take breaks and relax. In fact, it's necessary. Allowing yourself time to recharge will increase your productivity and reduce the likelihood of procrastination. Overcoming procrastination during stressful times is no small feat, but with understanding and strategic action, you can do it. Chapter 22. Develop a growth mindset and resilience. You might be wondering, what does a growth mindset have to do with overcoming procrastination? Well, quite a lot, actually. A growth mindset is the belief that you can develop your abilities through dedication and hard work. It's a love for learning, a passion for stretching yourself and sticking to it, even when it's not going well. Now, let's connect the dots. When you procrastinate, you're often avoiding tasks that seem challenging or overwhelming. You might doubt your ability to do them successfully. But with a growth mindset, you'd perceive these tasks differently. You'd see them as opportunities to grow and improve. You'd be less likely to put them off because you're not afraid of the challenge. Resilience, on the other hand, is your ability to bounce back from setbacks. It's a vital part of overcoming procrastination. When you procrastinate and the work piles up, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and give up. But if you're resilient, you won't let setbacks get in your way. You'll keep going, no matter what. So, how do you develop a growth mindset and resilience? Start by changing your perspective on challenges. See them as opportunities to learn, not threats. Embrace failures as part of the process, not the end of the world. Always remember, you're capable of more than you think. Chapter 23. Incorporate Mindfulness and Relaxation Practices. In overcoming procrastination, it's vital for you to incorporate mindfulness and relaxation practices into your routine. Techniques such as controlled breathing and meditation not only reduce stress but can also enhance your focus and productivity. Let's explore how these practices can become your secret weapons in battling procrastination and achieving your goals. Let's plunge into the power of breathing techniques as we endeavor to overcome procrastination. Your breath is mighty, and it's a powerful ally in your battle against procrastination. It's a simple yet effective tool that can help induce relaxation and reduce stress, two key factors that often fuel procrastination. Here's a straightforward technique you can do right now. It's called the 478 breathing method. Inhale for 4 seconds, hold that breath for 7 seconds, and then exhale for 8 seconds. Repeat this cycle 4 times. You'll find that this technique helps you relax, center your attention, and even improve your focus. When you're faced with an overwhelming task or deadline, your natural response may be distress and delay. But by using this breathing method, you can break that cycle. You'll create a calmer mind, making it easier to tackle tasks head on. Delving into the sphere of meditation exercises, the incorporation of mindfulness and relaxation practices become essential in your journey to overcome procrastination. Meditation cultivates a sense of calm, enabling you to tackle tasks without the stress-induced urge to delay. Mindfulness, the act of being fully present and engaged in the task at hand, is a tool you can use to stay focused. Start with a simple mindfulness exercise. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. As you exhale, let go of all the tension in your body. Now, focus on the task you've been avoiding. 
Visualize yourself completing it with ease. You feel the satisfaction of getting it done. Anytime your mind wanders, gently bring it back to the task. You don't have to meditate for hours to reap the benefits. Just 10 minutes a day can make a difference. Remember, the goal isn't to reach some state of perfection. It's about training your mind to stay focused and calm under pressure. So give it a try. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Today's the day to stop procrastinating and start doing. Chapter 24 Seek professional help when needed. Don't shy away from acknowledging when procrastination becomes a persistent problem in your life. It's okay to consult a qualified professional who can provide you with the necessary tools and strategies to tackle this issue head on. Together, you can develop an actionable plan that empowers you to regain control of your time and productivity. Understanding your persistent issues is a crucial step in conquering procrastination. It's not just about pushing through tasks, it's about recognizing and addressing the underlying problems that are holding you back. You're not lazy, and it's not that you don't care. But there's something deep inside you that's stopping you from moving forward. Take a step back and analyze your habits. Are you constantly putting off tasks because you're overwhelmed? Are you afraid of failure or success? Do you feel like you're not good enough? These are all persistent issues that could be causing your procrastination. It's important to be honest with yourself. It's okay to admit that you're struggling. In fact, acknowledging your issues is the first step towards overcoming them. Remember, everyone faces challenges. You're not alone. Once you've identified your persistent issues, it's time to confront them. Don't try to hide or ignore your problems. Instead, face them head on. Learn from them. Grow from them. You're stronger than you think. And remember, if you're struggling to overcome your persistent issues on your own, seek professional help. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. It shows that you're committed to improving yourself and overcoming procrastination. You can do this. You've got this. Traversing the labyrinth of your mind can be a formidable task, especially when you're dealing with persistent issues that lead to procrastination. You're not alone in this struggle, and it's important to remember that seeking professional help isn't a sign of weakness, but a step toward self-improvement. Psychologists, therapists, and life coaches are all professionals who can provide valuable insights and strategies to help you combat procrastination. They're trained to understand the human mind and behavior, and they've got the tools to help you navigate your mental maze. This isn't about outsourcing your problems, it's about getting the right guidance to tackle them. Think of it like this, if your car breaks down, you'd likely consult a mechanic. They've got the expertise to identify the issue and fix it. Similarly, professionals can help you identify the root causes of your procrastination and devise a plan to overcome it. Just as you'd turn to a mechanic for a car problem, seeking professional help for overcoming procrastination isn't an admission of defeat. It's a smart move, a strategic decision to tap into the expertise of those who've dedicated their lives to understanding and solving this issue. Therapists, coaches, or even trusted mentors can provide personalized strategies tailored to your specific needs and circumstances. Now, let's focus on a key aspect of overcoming procrastination, developing actionable strategies. Without a clear plan, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and fall back into old habits. Start by breaking down large tasks into manageable chunks. This makes the overall project less intimidating and provides a clear pathway forward. Next, set realistic deadlines. Having a time frame not only gives you a sense of urgency, but it also provides a light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, remember to reward yourself after accomplishing each task. This creates a positive reinforcement cycle that motivates you to keep going. Procrastination is a tough opponent, but with determination, the right strategies, and when necessary, professional help, you can overcome it. Start today, and soon, you'll be reaping the benefits of your hard work and dedication. Chapter 25 
sustain your newfound anti-procrastination lifestyle. Now that you've overcome procrastination, it's vital to sustain your newfound lifestyle. You'll benefit from adopting habit formation strategies, which will instill consistency and discipline in your daily routine. Mastering time management techniques, on the other hand, will help you prioritize tasks effectively, ensuring you stay on track and continue to conquer procrastination. A significant portion of your journey to overcome procrastination involves developing sustainable habits that promote productivity and deter delay. It's not enough to just decide to stop procrastinating. You need to arm yourself with proven strategies that can help you sustain this change. One such strategy is the habit loop, which consists of three elements, cue, routine, and reward. The cue triggers your habit, the routine is the action you take, and the reward is the benefit you get from the action. Analyze your current habits, identify the cues and rewards, and then craft new routines that lead to the same rewards. Another powerful strategy is temptation bundling, where you link a task you dread with an activity you enjoy. This turns an unpleasant task into a more enjoyable experience. Lastly, remember that habits aren't formed overnight. It's a process of repetition and consistency. So don't be hard on yourself if you falter. Instead, use it as a learning experience to improve and move forward. Armed with these strategies, you're more equipped to maintain an anti-procrastination lifestyle. Go on. Make these habits your second nature. While you've made significant strides in overcoming procrastination through habit formation, mastering time management techniques is the next pivotal step. Time management isn't merely organizing your hours, it's about taking charge of your life. It's about making smart decisions that maximize productivity and minimize stress. First, prioritize your tasks. Use the Eisenhower box, separating tasks into four categories, urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and not urgent or important. This helps you focus on what truly matters. Second, adopt the Pomodoro technique. Work for 25 minutes, then take five minute breaks. These short bursts of productivity prevent burnout and maintain motivation. Lastly, learn to delegate. If a task can be done 80% as well by someone else, delegate it. This frees up your time for those tasks only you can do. Don't let the fear of tackling your to-do list paralyze you. Remember, overcoming procrastination isn't about perfection, it's about progress. If you're worried about the enormity of a task, break it down into manageable parts. Use tools to organize and prioritize your work. Embrace growth, resilience, and mindfulness. And don't be afraid to seek help if needed. You've got this. Now start turning your someday into today. Thanks for listening to or reading this from Audiobooks Office.